Welcome back to another episode of uh, Dark Souls 2 Lore Through. Uh, we just kind of went over on the last episode. Um, but now let's read through stuff and go through everything here in um, Majula and then continue on with the game. Alright, so we got the Mace of the Insolent. The Mace of Formerly High Ranking Clerics. It is combined with a sacred chime and can cast miracles and hexes with strong attack. The cleric clerics had, had uh, held venerated positions once, but now their souls wander aimlessly in the depths of a murky darkness. Well, clearly, clearly we fought a ton of those guys last episode. Archdrake Mace. The land of Lindo is governed by, the st by stringent laws, and those who dare defy them are punished without mercy. It is often the sinful who seek piety, spurned only by a selfish desire for salvation. Uh, this should be the same. I think we've seen one of those. We read that. We read that. We read this. Yep. Oops. Did we actually? Yes. Alright. Olin Ford's staff. Staff of Olin Ford the Sorcerer. Olin Ford, revered as the father of sorcery in Melfia, sought knowledge that surpassed mankind's ken, and so ventured into the undead crypt and did away with his humanity. Some hold the theory that Melfian sorceries and pyromancies originated within the boundaries of Trang Lake in ancient in ages past. Hmm. So I wonder if Olin Ford is the guy that kind of like brought Drang Lake back to well Melfia. Oh, so they're saying that oh I see see see, see. I see what they're saying. Olin Ford is from Melfia, but he traveled to Drang Lake or to what it was maybe um Vinheim at that point and he brought back knowledge uh, of sorcery to Melfia which had eluded the people in Melfia at the time. So he really kind of set Melfia up for what it was. That's cool. Although pyromancies I don't know so much about. We didn't read the magic shield. Small shield used by Ladia Apostles, imbued with a special magic that allows spells to be deflected by parrying. The Ladia Apostles were inhabitants of the undead crypt, but failed to treat death with the proper respect. As punishment, they were denied peaceful deaths. That's creepy. Uh, we read that, that, and that. We read that. Uh, I don't think we read this, but... Nothing. The Lady Apostles and their Cassid occupied the Uncrib death in, and misused death. This invoked the ire of Finito, who branded them as transgressors. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Oh man, did we get any other rings? I don't remember. Let's just go through them real quick. Okay, we read that, we read that, we read that. Do we read this? Miracle that launches a great spear of lightning. Said to be the legacy of an ancient clan. The name of the clan has been lost to time. So yeah, they bickered about which is the original one. Well, that one's the original one. At least from the way that it appears to me. Okay, so we've read everything there. <laughs> now, uh, Moglin has a bit of other things for us. You need armor. Okay. Felstad, helm worn by the royal Aegis, uh, originally imbued with the power of miracles, now soaked with dark after extended exposure in the undead crypt. A knight from a faraway land was lured to this accursed land, but forgot even why he came, eventually reduced to a shadow of his former self. It's interesting, that's what's happened to a lot of us, but apparently that happened to Velstad as well. Uh, we'll learn a lot more about Velstad. Not a lot more, but we'll learn more about his origins and stuff like that later. A throne defender. Helmet worn by the throne defender. The defender has stood by the throne for ages. Will his weight be worth the while? Well, obviously not. Throne watcher. 
helm worn by the throne watcher. The watcher waited by the throne for ages. Wow. Such Are rich sure? such rich lore on those. Um and uh let's just change to this now. Um Let's at least try it. It'll never break. Okay, so when you beat the Throne Watcher and Defender, the last flame appears, and then now he'll actually say something new. Even more flames. Of, I don't know. But there is, it seems, something. I would not bet. Wait, what? It was, did you see the. But there is, it's something. Oh, my dear lord. I mean, we have plenty of other things to accomplish before we're... Like, we can keep coming back to him, but I really thought that that would... I thought the Throne Watcher and Defender were the last flame there. Um, uh, do I even want to do this? You've had quite... You must have a glory. What a wonderful feeling. To cast miracles, you... Mi we preserve... You must... No need for mi the gods frown. Okay, well... I, uh... Okay, I probably should have a lot of... I'm at 62. It's not a great. Oh, but this doesn't add anything. Okay, well, this is like a hard battle even at the end. I don't need to do it right now. It's just that it's just a, a war of attrition with that NPC. We'll talk about it later. Never mind right now. Alright, so this is plus five, right? Okay, so we're fully upgraded here. Can we uh, level up even more? By chance? Yes. Uh, I guess these don't matter now. Um, yeah, I guess let's go some adaptability to 20. I mean, we can certainly go back to the other weapons, but the uh, Senior Spear doesn't scale, so that my strength doesn't matter. Okay, um, well let us go back. So we did all this. Done with this. So the only thing to go back to is go to the final place in the fork. In the uh, shaded ruins. In the shaded woods specifically I uh, saw that you could parry these guys I think oh great I want to try okay well at least they made this harder Decent weapon. I just don't know that it makes me any better against this enemy. Yeah, I'm doing 548 damage if I get the right amount of attacks in. I mean, it's so overpowered in PvE, uh, player versus environment. Um, but for PvP, it's a little different. These things are just terrible looking. I 
I just want to parry one. There we go. Never parried one before. Okay, I'm not even. I did forget that they were actually cursing me. Or stone it, like, turning me petrified. <laughs> Oops. Oh, that means the stupid thing is back. Does that curse me? Yeah. Um, whatever. In this game, that's not that big of a deal. Alright. Maybe I can actually kill them here. Oh, that's a cool attack. Oh. Ugh. Thought I'd get a little closer. very well where he just punches with one hand well <laughs> don't need to pair these guys Although it took a while for them to actually, like, just, you know, curse me or whatever. We got the red tear stone ring, and then we have this white birch, which we start to see a lot more of in Dark Souls 2, but there, I think that's where the Ulusil Ivory Catalyst came from, if I'm not mistaken. A ring set with a rare tear stone. Ring when the wearer is in danger. Kaitha, goddess of tears, mourns the undeserving dead. Sheds tears as red as blood. So, same as the blue tear stone ring. But I suppose the implication is that if you're almost about to die, it's gonna. It's, she cries for you and then gives you strength in your final days. Okay, now we can really test this out. Keep. We heard that Aldia, by the way, yeah, here's the other king's door. <laughs> we know a little bit about Aldia, not all the terrible, terrible um, experimentations he did on these things and created these monsters that we find around the place, including those dogs that turn into stone. So we'll find a lot more of that stuff around here. And look who we found. Someone at their wit's end. Who are you? Oh, no, forgive me. I know you. Yes, of course. How goes your journey? I know not what you seek in this faraway land. I pray for your safety. Please take these. Consider this thanks for keeping me sane. Didn't seem like I did a good job. Oh, wow. My name is Luca Teal. I beg of you, remember my name. For I may not myself. I remember Lucatil of Mira. My name is Luca. 
I beg it, for I may not. Uh, do we rest here? I guess it doesn't really matter with full health, and we don't have durability. So yeah, this is a fun little section. However, with this this uh, <laughs> this uh, weapon, it really like nullifies any issues we would have here. Why? <laughs> you think I would learn? Okay, at least I have enough health now. So now we get the malformed skull and the dark mask. Oh, I should drop off all this stuff. The skull of some identified, unidentified creature. Swing as a great hammer to use as a weapon. Possibly the skull of a dragon. A rare specimen. Likely too rare to be swung about willy-nilly. Guess we could take a look at that. It's kind of cool. It certainly looks like the skull of a dragon. It's pretty crazy as a weapon. And then the Dark Mask, which is not going to give us anything. Mask of a Knight's Sumai Dark, no one knows the idea yet. Same uh, description. Try our hand at Eldia's Manor. Um, I wonder if Lucatil still is, stays there because I mean, I, oh, we have Lucatil stuff. My dear, Mira Greatsword. Greatsword issued to the Proud Knights of Mirror's official order, this one wielded by Lucatil. This greatsword demands advanced skill and a rare and unique sword technique. A tiny message is inscribed on the blade, a promise to a special someone. I would say that that probably has to do with um, Lucatil's brother that she spoke about earlier. Mask attached to a ceremonial hat belonged to Lucatil. Normally, hats and masks are separate, but these two have been a joint. Vests worn by knights while on travel belong to Lucatil of Mera. Only those who have dis got distinguished themselves on the battle and who were admitted into the elite ranks of Mera's official order of knights. This is like a pet your head and uh, and rub your, rub your belly and pet your head at the same time trying to walk and read. It is common to hear of a peasant's dream of striving for knighthood as an escape from hardship, but who would think it ever possible? Uh, well, that's what Lucatil told us, which is one of the things that makes her endearing, is that she was not born wealthy at all. One of those distinguished themselves on the battlefield were admitted to the elite ranks of Mira's official order of knights. So, that's cool. But I'm going to get rid of all this stuff because we'll be getting a lot more um, things and uh, it'll be easier to organize it. Uh, gosh. I want to keep those just in case. She's gone. I don't think she drops anything if you kill her. Like, in Dark Souls 1, they a lot of times, like, made it so that, you know, you would, like, kill a phantom or complete their storyline and do whatever, and then you'd find them dead. They do that in Dark Souls 3 as well. But this, they just, like, have them give it to you, despite the fact that they're still wearing it. Which is weird. There is an item over here. Here it is. Twilight Herb.
and look at who we happen to have found. Aslatil of Mira. So this is Lugatil's brother. And can actually drop gear. And I actually farmed for a long time. Wow. Wow. I think I'll just sit here and tank. I won't even attempt to dodge. Um, but yeah, this is obviously who Lugatil was trying to find. Sorry to do this, Aslatil. It also is interesting because, yeah, all of the, uh, you know, NPCs in any Dark Souls story have one name. There's never, like, Sigmire Jones. And it also it almost implies that Aslatil and Luca Teal are, like, their names. Like, sorry, <laughs> Teal, like, is their last name. Anyone that has Teal at the end of their name. Which is interesting because in Dark Souls 1 they had Sig, Meyer, and Sig Lind. And we'll have another character with the Sig at the beginning too. What triggers this now? Does this not trigger? So here's a story that we will be doing, a side quest. However, we're not ready for it. We're not prepped for it. But there is some sort of force field with this guy behind it. Please, just stay away. No, please, don't come near me. Nothing good will come of it. Just leave me alone. Leave this place and leave me be, as I'd not see any harm. Please. So, we need some conditions to speak with him. Um, which we will get later. Well, we can do it now, but I don't want to. And then there's these things that say pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. Don't do this. And you can pull this. And that will let him out. And that means that he'll... Nah, now this I know. Well, again, who knows if this is what actually happens in this game. But uh, he would start to invade you if you let him out. I just assumed it was storyline, and we'll need a few items to finish his storyline later, so. So this guy never triggers anymore, eh? Fair enough. Look at this. Great magic barrier again. Who is that most recently being sold by? See, it's hard to remember in this game because it's to me so random. Who has what items? Oh, look at this, it's a uh, pate. Paid stuff, that is. <laughs> Riveting fights, Dark Souls 2. Okay, 
Okay. <laughs> We've just been cl cl quicker and cleaner. So yeah, there's some more of these mirrors here, which maybe implies that Aldia had something to do with them. But also shows that they're not always perfected. This is new, by the way, but it, that's what this tells me. That someone tried to come out of there and uh, failed. So this is a, yet again, the guy we fought in the, the Looking Glass Night room, and also the guy we fought in front of the end of Purgatory, which means to me that he might be someone. Um, he has Orma's Great Shield or whatever. Now this looks like Oscar of Astora. Ooh, Northern Neutral Band 2. I don't think we have any Northern Neutral Bands. Oh no, this is not Oscar. This is Paid again. Well, at least that's Paid Shield and his Spear. I guess I don't know about that. Okay, I'm just not predicting him very well. See what's in here. Bright bug. Is that just another one of those things? Yeah. Interesting. Oh. Um. Hmm. When do, does he have to come to me with the to the boss? I guess we can do that. No, there used to be a uh, petrified. Yeah, he's still here. We don't need to uh, go that way though. We can just go around up here. Hopefully, Cell Sword Lewitt can find his way. And now this guy we still have here. Oh, interesting. There's a guy block. Oh, what? Why would I do that? Okay, probably a good reason for it. Okay, I actually don't know how to fight these with... Usually, like, use sorceries or something for these guys. Wow, Selsark Lewitt is... absolutely not hurt whatsoever. Did something... I feel like something changed. Why is my... Maybe, I, maybe I'm just... whatever. See if the Gowers... ring? Yeah, maybe. I feel like my stamina raise is so much slower, but maybe I'm just wrong. Don't you dare. Okay, I will not this time. Well, getting tons of bonfire ascetics, which I might use at some point during this playthrough. Sorry if you can hear my cat. He's uh, being a little needy right now. All right, why would one, okay, yet another cool statue to wonder about. Almost reminds me of uh, Guinevere because if I think about bounty and fertility, I think of like, I don't know, flowing robes and water, I don't know why. 
Um, why would I use a Fringer Bench of your here? I have like a million, right? I have three. Is this just like a false? There's another one here. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on that. <laughs> so interesting. This is a the dragon that we saw in Dragonlight Castle, spewing out the poison or the thing that erodes your armor. Okay, so this is nice because in my Dark Souls 1 playthrough, lore through, I hypothesized that the uh, mimics were made by um, Seath, although when we read the symbol of avarice, it kind of applied differently. But this kind of shows that, like, here's all the things that Aldia created. Yeah, so maybe these things were kind of evolved from the... Uh, from the ants in some way. Wow. That does so much damage. I guess I can just just go balls to the wall. Like why do I even need to do fun things like parrying? So yeah, that's interesting. Like can I get this down? Or can I kill it? Oh gosh, I guess not. I wonder if it has like an item. I love how they make sounds now when they attack. So, ugh, get out of my way. So yeah, there's the thing that the malformed skull would come from. Those used to be in the uh, Sinners rise. So yeah, unlike unlike the um, unlike the uh, Duke's archives. I mean, this looks a lot more like an experimental lab, which is cool. Um, and definitely looks like someone who is trying to achieve some crazy things. Uh, can I even get in here? Oh my gosh, it's Cellsword Lewitt, get out of my face! Okay, you can get in there. Okay, well I am... Huh, I want to maybe go back and light all these. Um... Okay, let's do this. Soul Geyser. That's interesting. You can drop down here from up there too, by the way. There's like a ram skull in here. Crocevern. But yeah, we can see that... Uh, I guess what's kind of cool is that like all these weird monsters that we see in the game that aren't hollows essentially all kind of center around here so you can kind of see all the different versions of the game like you can see the game as you came up to know it oops <sighs> that was not a really good sentence but you know what I'm saying Uh, and we'll use this for now because we don't need the King's Ring for a while. I really want to light those. Oh my gosh. Uh, can I rest while he's... Yeah. I don't need to. I got good health. Got plenty of healing items. And I will respawn there. That's all I need. He blocked at the last second. Oh god, he hits so hard. So sword blew it! Okay. Okay, they drop petrified dragon bones. Um, there 
there's a guy in here in, in uh... Oh my god. In the, uh... Future, uh, in the in New Game Plus, and he drops a, a really interesting item. It's derived from the, um... Painting Guardian stuff, so... Oh my god. Did something happen with my armor? Like, are these guys just more powerful? Is that the thing? Okay, so... This is probably was a bad idea to have him... Yeah, come here. No. So he's supposed to knock this door down. And, uh... This is just in hopes that we don't actually... Oh, come on. Come over here. There's that attack. It's more common than I think. Like, if, if, if I didn't want him to do something, I would not want... I would not want him to do this. Alright, I don't want him to do this, but if I, you know, every other time I wish that he would focus on someone else other than me. Oh my god. This is just ridiculous. Come on! Can you pay attention to me for- like, why is this happening? He like died right there. Yeah. Wow, that probably would have killed me. Well, maybe not. Alright. Formed shell. One of the malformed weapons developed in Aldia, swung like a great hammer, appears to be a fragment of a giant shell, but its precise origins are unknown. The peculiar figure known as Lord Aldia attempted to uncover the secrets of life itself and viewed the undead as a key to this mystery. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, did I pick up a key then, or what? I don't think I did. I thought there was a key. supposed to be a key down there. Okay, well we did pick up a uh, soul geyser. A secret art unleashes a gush of souls. The homing soul mass pierces its target, then hits repeatedly for additional damage. This blasphemous spell is a family heirloom of Lord Aldia's, and was designed to pummel foes until its power is entirely exhausted. I think this exists in um, Dark Souls 1, or maybe, I, maybe I'm just thinking, yeah, see, like, hmm, you know what, I think the key might be uh, up through the door, not this, but... There is a butcher knife, and that is the model they use for this game. So instead of using a boss hole to craft it, I could just make this. It is interesting that there is a pile of giants here. Experimenting on giants, apparently. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I guess the key is probably through here. Whoa. 
These are just not fun to fight anymore. They're very tanky. And they, uh... Yeah, huh. Well, this, this door I can open. Never mind. It's this door. So where's the key? I mean, I thought it was in this room here. But I went down there and I grabbed everything. Hmm. somehow. I don't think we really need it. I don't think there's any items there. Did I miss an item here? Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna beat the boss before I attempt to light those unlike last time also I'm nervous that it might do something towards um, that is so crazy I don't know where that key is torturing device Like, I think the point of the key would be to get a shortcut to this boss. Oh, it's so awesome. I mean, if this was your backyard, textures don't look that great close up, but... Cool. Alright. Let's see if I remember this boss. Guardian Dragon. Interesting, the uh, the dragons I never really thought about it. They they attack like the giants when you uh, are under their feet. Oh come on! <laughs> there goes the guardian dragon soul. Or the guardian dragon. Soul of a dragon that guards the path to the shrine. Do the dragons watch over the land of their own will, 
or are they in the grip of one of Aldia's spells? I have a theory that kind of uses some different, some knowledge that is not, that we don't have yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if Aldia created these dragons from the giants. They attack like the, the giants a little bit with the way they step. I mean, again, that's not the biggest clue, but we see that he has giants all over. He also has skulls of of dragons that he might be trying to, like he, there's petrified dragon bones all over the place. He might be trying to recreate dragons with giants and stuff like that. As I say, I have a little bit more to my theory than just that, but I mean, now that I'm putting together some other things, I think he might have created a number of dragons. Like, I don't, I don't think that that guardian, it just said, like, was it trying to protect this, this area, the shrine, on its own will, or was it under a spell? And that would make sense if it were under a spell. Now we get, we come to the Dragon Airy. Now, in the original game, Okay, first, a couple things here, just from what I know. This, uh, they, did, they had a different model for the Emerald Herald when she was a little child, a little girl. And um, it was never used in the game. They just found that in the files. And then we have this, which is a different voice actress than the rest. Now, I don't know if they fixed it here, but this could be the old voice actress. Bearer of the curse. Long have I awaited one such as you. One who might shatter the shackles of fate. One who can set me free. Bearer of the curse. It was my own manifestation that led you here. The ancient dragon has watched over the world for eons past. Take this. Do not resist. The dragon welcomes you. So she says that it was it was her manifestation that brought you here. Now, if she was a little girl and we were speaking to her, um, that would maybe make some more sense. Um, although that sentence is not the best way to communicate it, but picture this. She's a little kid and she says, I projected myself into the world and I was the one that you were, that was what you met. And then that person told you to come here, basically. This is where I really am. Um, and it was a little child, essentially. I don't know. It made, I, I, it makes sense that they, you know made her look this way but it also obfuscates the fact that this might be the real one and the rest of them especially when they just appear randomly you know in Dragon Lake Castle at, at King Vendrick and whatever it might be that those are just manifestations of this the real one she also gave us the aged feather which I pointed out she kind of has on her belt an aged bird feather returned to the last bow and fire rest that can use repeatedly. The child of the dragon, sequestered away from the world, imagined a world of boundless possibilities from the mere sight of a feather. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if there's more on this, but yeah, this is basically letting us know that the Emerald Herald is the child of a dragon. She is a crossbreed, essentially. She's also sequestered the way from the world. Um, so that means that she's here. She's stuck here. She's not actually the one we've been talking to. And she imagined a world of boundless possibilities from the mere sight of a feather. Not exactly sure what that means, but it could also be an, a reference to Velka. You know, an old bird feather 
crows, a sequestered away person who is the child of a dragon is that's Priscilla, of course. I mean, so this could be a reference to that, or a tie-in, or like a real thing, or just a theme, I don't know, but um, it's certainly interesting. And this, I believe, which that's the dragon shrine up there, this, I believe, is Vinheim Dragon School, right here. And I think this is what the the world used to be like around Vinheim. All of these can be fake dragons, or all of these could be the dragons from past. Um, so, I don't know if you can see. Does she have a tail? Or is that just her hair? She had like long hair. Or it could be her belt. Okay. So let's jump uh, down to a bonfire here. And then we can. Oh. What? Well, that used to be a shortcut. And now it's just there. Alrighty then. Well, we're going to call this uh, an episode, and uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.